right. Hello again, everyone. This is Mark Samadini from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm here with Dave Loper from Clear Center. And today we're going to cover settings inside of Clear OS. Specifically, we're going to go through the general settings of Clear OS, what things are critical to make the server run well, and where I can find out more if I have questions. All right, Dave, show us. All right, thanks, Mark. So in ClearOS, we have a section called uh, System, and primarily what we have in here are specific settings that you'll want to tune on every ClearOS server that you have. So some things are more relevant depending on what you're going to do with ClearOS, but there are, there are some general things in here that are kind of maintenance administrative tasks that no matter what you're using the server for, you're going to want to kind of have a handle on. Um, I'm going to start here with accounts and account manager. So the account manager settings are really, uh, they have to do with kind of what you are doing with your ClearOS as, as far as how it uses directory services. And there's not a lot to do here because you'll, you'll actually process through this um, when you are installing apps. There are certain apps you just can't do anything with uh, until you like uh, decide on what directory services you're going to use, whether this is a master or slave. And at the end of your settings process, you're going to have the, um, you know, basically uh, these extensions and policies that kind of snap into the different aspects of ClearOS. So these app policies are basically, uh, you know, who can use these types of, uh, of things. But this comes out of configuring the directory, whether it's Active Directory Connector, Samba Directory, or with the Open LDAP directory. So either way, they, either if, if, even if they're using ClearOS as a, a, uh, a primary domain controller or it's, you know, not, they need to go in here and, and do those settings. Well, what's going to happen is the, the, our view here is kind of a little bit different be, than what would happen on a new new system because with a new system, it's going to guide you through, uh, you know, what directory to configure. And the same thing is going to happen if you click on, like, users. Like, on a fresh install of ClearOS, you, go, you come here and you click on the users, and what's going to happen here is that you are going to see that... It, it's gonna. It's not gonna show you user lists. It's not gonna let you make users. It's gonna say, oh, I don't have a directory to start from here. You need to pick what type of interaction I'm gonna have with the directory. Am I the directory or is somebody else the directory? I don't know. You need to set that. So every user is going to have to do this. You know, kind of regardless. Now there are ways to use ClearOS without going through this hurdle. Like if if you're just using ClearOS as a firewall, for example, and there's not really any user interaction. You know, you're not using logins for VPN. Maybe you're just doing site-to-site -site and firewall rules, and you never even, you ever, never even touch this section. But with most uses of, of ClearOS, you're going to come to something that's going to say, "Hey, I need users. I need the directory mm -hmm. driver. I need the accounts driver." So I'm going to force you to jump through these hoops. And then once you do that, then you can start creating users. You can start creating groups. I see. So there's another uh, special category here. We have this uh, administrators uh, app installed. This is really good if you're going to have people other than a single user administer uh, the ClearOS in general or even um, subparts. So you know we're here logged in as root. It says root in the upper uh, corner here. But say, for instance, you wanted to have uh, Bob come in and manage your server. Well, you're going to set up him as a user and you're going to put him in some groups. One of those groups could be a group that has the administrative rights over certain applications that you have in, in ClearOS. And that's what you would do here, for example, in this. Um, the account manager also has tools for um, setting password policies. Now, this is only compatible with the open LDAP, for example, but this is where it lands, right? Now that you've extended your directory structure, there's going to be things that are really, really useful that kind of reach across the whole server network gateway layers. They don't fit into a specific type of technology, so they end up here as part of the system core. Um, the same thing for backup. You know, backup covers the server, the network, and the gateway layer, so it, it belongs rightly here in the system. So you're going to have any backup type thing that you set up, and we're not just talking about data backup, but we're talking about system integrity with UPS and, and stuff like that for, uh, you know, if you've got battery. These types of things are going to show up in this 
this backup. It's part of the general uh, system maintenance, and that's why I'm saying, you know, as an administrator, you're going to come in here and you're going to set these things. And this is going to be one of those things that, you know, is really important at first, and then once you get it up and running, it's like less important on a day-to-day -day management type basis, um, other than, you know, perhaps users and groups. Um, this base section really describes the core of what happens in the user interface for ClearOS. So this is describing the core that happens and uh, you see the ClearOS Marketplace for example and I, I like to make a joke that yes the ClearOS Marketplace app is an app in the marketplace right and how do you install it from the marketplace if and, and the, the truth is is it's installed by default right but it is an option here and uh, you can click on it through this menu or or up here but but ClearOS is a very pluggable infrastructure and so it, it naturally it has its own life cycle it has its own support and it has its own kind of presence in the marketplace it comes by a default install as does the dashboard and the support segments to uh, ClearOS um, and uh, these are things that are prominent here at the top because they're stuff that you're going to use all the time um, and but they they had they find their place in in this kind of this kind of structure. Uh, the last thing we have is settings, and this is going to be all over the map on, on functionality. For example, we can see you know we've got certificate, date and time. You're going to manage your system registration from here. Um, you're going to manage notifications here. This master slave synchronization master slave synchronization that goes back to the directory type. Uh, problems that you may be solving when you very first set it up. You know, after I get this set up, the only time I'd ever come into this app would be to get the synchronization key to join a slave to my ClearOS infrastructure, right? That's the only real reason why I'd come in here. But maybe I'm going to look at, you know, systems that are connected and have authentication. I've got the Windows file system here, and for example, it's showing. Uh, these other servers that are part of my uh, master slave synchronization. So if I have a, a member that I'm trimming off, I'd come in here to do that. But other than that, a lot of things are just set it and forget it. So um, some of the things that are most critical here uh, on the system, we've, we've talked kind of over overarching. If I had to like d identify some of the typical tasks that you would always want to do on a ClearOS server, is you're always going to want to make sure that the account system driver is is registered and initialized, except for those except for those situations where we um, are uh, not using ClearOS as an accounts uh, platform. We're going to use that. The certificate manager almost always you're going to use that because you're going to want to have some security layers attached with the way that you do ClearOS. Um, lastly, you know, the users and groups, you're going to be doing that, and the system registration. Those are the critical ones. Now, during the wizard, you're going to take care of system registration, but for example, you may come through and do the system registration just because you are re-registering the system, or you're applying a different license to the system, uh, those types of things. But my top three picks would be certificates, the accounts initialization stuff with the users and groups, and uh, the, uh, the, the certificate manager, let's see, what did I say? Certificate manager, the user uh, accounts driver, which is the users and groups, and the registration. Those are the top ones that you're probably always going to kind of go through. All right, great. And all these are under the system category in the uh, overall structure of things. Yes, and, and you're not going to have, when you first install ClearOS, if you don't have like it pre-bundled with a lot of apps, then it's going to be prominent because that's like the only thing that's that's there, right? Because a lot of these things come pre-installed. Um, but, um, you know, after you start populating with apps, you know, you may neglect that there's some things that you still have to do. So whatever you have that's installed by default, it's worthwhile to go through each and every one. And then there are going to be some things that you're going to want to go to the marketplace and sort by that category and say, okay, do I really need these? And uh, that's often an exercise that you'll do even before you go through all of the other apps because you, you may forget that, oh, yeah, I guess I really should have a backup strategy for this. And, you know, what are my options? So going through that is really, really important.
So just systematically, I mean, you'd start with settings and then you go into your apps and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would definitely do that. Uh, one of the first things that you do, um, you know, it, it's going to pop you to configure your, your dashboard, but almost immediately after that, you're going to have like two different paths, marketplace for apps and then system settings. And it's it, the marketplace is the sexy thing that you want to go through and get everything, you know, done and get, you know, whatever you're doing with the server set up. But really, you should take the time to go through the, the system settings. And if you have more questions about like what's going on in the system and the system settings, again, we've got a lot of support options here. There's The documentation link is always going to be helpful here. A lot of the documentation for the uh, system settings is really well uh, built because it's the typical things that have to be done. And so rather than dealing with special use case, it's going to be very, very informative about specifically the, the type of activity that you're involved in. And then lastly, if you have questions, you know, you can get a, a you know, a version of ClearOS and, and get a trial version that maybe has some support. You may want to consider buying a supported version. And then you can ask those questions either during your evaluation period or on a supported copy uh, about, you know, how to get going and, and, and uh, what to do. We also have some other guides that are going to take us through kind of some specific scenarios and so check through the HPE channel for uh, these things and, and look for more video content that comes from us about kind of recipes that you want to do for you know gateway server network but this is one of those things that you, you really kind of want to go through one at a time go through the apps in the marketplace one at a time and consider what is there in kind of the, the system core gotcha well thanks Dave so we've covered the settings here and we went through some of the general settings and uh, and then those that are critical to make the server run well and then we ended off with uh, where you can go to find out more about these settings. So thanks Dave. Alright, thanks Mark.